This tutorial is going to explain the influence of a quarter wave plate upon an incident polarization state. So to get rolling here, as before, we're going to, we're going to consider an optical axis and we're going to consider an a beam propagating this way. And in the middle of the optical system, there's going to be a quarter wave plate, QWP. Now at location A, we can have various incident states. One important one for the use of a quarter wave plate would be if the incident light is circularly polarized. In that case, the incident state looks like a 1i state, or it could be a 1 minus i state. I'll normalize that, so that's a unit vector of incident polarization. The influence of the quarter wave plate if we're in the unrotated reference frame of the lab, the typical way we write that is 1, 0, 0, i. And the output state that we would then see at location B, we do the matrix math here, and we get an output state with an x component of 1 and a y component of minus 1. So let's take a look at what those states looked like. If we draw a head-on view of xy space, uh, in this case, the incident state was a 1i state. That means that the y component lagged the x component and maximizes a quarter cycle later. So that would correspond to a circularly polarized state going in the, making a circle and the y component maximizes a quarter cycle later than x. So this is the handedness. There's the arrow for the handedness. So that's the incident state and what comes out is a 1 minus 1. Well, that's a linear state, and it goes at minus 45 degrees. So that is the output state. So what's happened here is we've taken a circular state, circular state in, and we've converted it, in this case, to a linear state. And that is one of the big uses of a quarter wave plate, is to convert from circular to linear or from linear to circular. These arrows always go both ways. You can always start with the output state and create this input state. Let's show an example of that right now. Let's suppose we send this 1 minus 1 state into another quarter wave plate. So suppose we passed B along to some location C. So then the input state would be this state over here, 1 minus 1 over root 2, properly normalized. We'll hit that same type of quarter wave plate oriented in the XY coordinate system. And what's the output here? The X component is going to be 1 times 1 plus 0 times minus 1, so that's going to be a 1. And in the bottom, the y component, 0 times 1, plus i times minus 1, that's minus i. Still over root 2, properly normalized. Let's look at what that looks like. Again, if we consider a front-on view in xy space, we started off with a 1 minus 1 state, so I'll color that for in. The input state looked like this. And the output state is 1 minus i, so that means that the y component trails the x component by a negative phase, or we could say that it leads the x component by 90 degrees. So if we look at what the output state looks like, it's going to be circular, equal amplitudes, and 90 degrees out of phase. But y now leads x, so y maximizes before x, 
So now this is the sense of handedness opposite of this. That's a case where linear in becomes circular out. So I'll just help you remember that, even though it's already implied up here that linear can go to circular and circular can go to linear. So this is a case where linear went to circular. This is the most common thing that you do with a quarter wave plate is you convert between circular and linear. We more often want to prepare one of those two states to send through an optical system, either fully circularly polarized light or fully linearly polarized light. But it's important to note that a quarter wave plate can change the ellipticity of a linear state anywhere you want. It doesn't have to change it all the way to circular. It can expand it into any level of ellipticity. And let's see an example of that. Suppose we arrange for the input uh, polarization to be linear, but not oriented along up at the 45 degree or minus 45 degree axis. Let's suppose in, we send in an arbitrary linear polarization, cos theta, sine theta. Now that's properly normalized, by the way. We don't need a root two in the denominator. And if we now send that linearly polarized light at some arbitrary angle through our wave plate. You can see what's going to happen is you're going to get a state which looks like cos theta for the x and this i times the sine theta is going to give you an i sine theta for the y component. What does that look like? So let's draw the incident state first, cos theta sine theta. This time I'll draw myself some axes of the x and y coordinate system just so I have something to relate to. So the incident state is some arbitrary angle. Let's say it's about this much. So there's the incident state making its little angle theta with the x-axis. So that's my incident state x component is cos theta, y component here is sine theta. The output state has the same x component and y component amplitude, but the y component now trails by 90 degrees the x component. One way to relate to that is to draw, in this case, a little rectangular box around the linear component. And now we know that when, when the y, x component is at its maximum, it'll be here, and the y component will be out of phase, will be zero. And we're going to trace out an ellipse like this, because the x and y components are 90 degree out of phase. So we know that when the x component is maximal, the y component is going to be zero in time, and vice versa. So our output state is going to be an ellipse that looks like this. And the y component trails the x component by 90 degrees, so it maximizes later. That means that this is going to be the handedness. So this is a case where linear was tuned to become elliptical. And theta determines the ellipticity. And that's important because this means, remember this can go either way, and that's what's important. This means that I can send in any elliptical input state and all I, can, I can always collapse it to being linear, regardless of what its ellipticity is. Because if this process can run this way, I can also run the process this way if I do it correctly, very analogously to the way circular input can be made linear and linear input can be made circular. It's also true that linear input, if you tune the angle between the wave plate and the incident state properly, you can make linear input become any degree of ellipticity, and any degree of ellipticity can be made linear. And that is an important property of a quarter wave plate, is that it can take any degree of ellipticity state and can always collapse it to linear. And if you then have the, if you have the sequence 
of an elliptical state in. So if the input is elliptical, what you can do is take a quarter wave plate and make it linear, and then you can pass it through a half wave plate and you can choose the orientation. So now you can see that any input elliptical state, so not especially linear or circular, any input elliptical state through a process of a quarter wave plate and a half wave plate in that order can give you a linearly polarized state in any orientation you want. An obvious choice in the lab might be either vertically or horizontally polarized. Just with these two elements, you can take any arbitrary input state and get it linearly polarized in a way that you want for your experiment. There's one other important point to make about quarter wave plates, and that's to emphasize that any wave plate that can act as a something that delays the Y component by 90 degrees can also make the Y component lead at, by an extra 90 degrees. Let's just make sure we see how the math tells us that. So I'll clear this screen up now. So let's just remember that when we look at a quarter wave plate front on, we will we think about it having a one axis, and in this case an I axis. This is what we call the minus one axis with a half wave plate. With a quarter wave plate, you've got a one dimension and an I dimension that delays this component by 90 degrees relative to this component. And the matrix for that looks like one zero zero I. Now if we rotate this wave plate by 90 degrees, we're obviously going to get still a square, but now a square where the one axis is the Y component and the I axis is the X component. There's no significance to writing the I on the left-hand side versus the right-hand side. I'm doing it here to sort of further emphasize that the one I labels have rotated 90 degrees, but it's just referring to the X and the Y components. So the matrix for this element is going to be I, zero, zero, one, since we've changed the roles of what it does to the X component and the Y component relative to this guy. But if we just factor out a factor of I, that's a global phase that usually doesn't matter, we then, this, this I here of course becomes a one, and this one here, if I factor out an I, what's left is a minus I. And this here is the recipe for a quarter wave plate that gives a 90 degree lead to the Y component rather than a 90 degree lag. So the take home message is that any quarter wave plate can be used either to delay the Y component by 90 degrees or to relatively speaking advance the Y component by 90 degrees. You do that by just rotating the wave plate or equivalently by rotating the input state whichever one is the more experimentally convenient one to do.